climate change is going to have profound impacts on where species occur. Species uh, live in the places they do for a variety of reasons. Things like soil conditions that might be needed or interactions with other species or the ability of species to move on their own to new parts of the world. But oftentimes species are limited to the places they live by the climate conditions that are found there. So one of the reasons a species might live in coastal California but not inland is that inland it might be too hot and dry for it. So one of the things that we expect to happen with climate change is that some species will shift their geographic distribution. So they will, they will literally shift where they occur. Um, and when we say species, we're really talking about individuals that comprise a species. So where will sequoia trees be 100 years from now? Some of them probably won't occur where they currently do. Where were Joshua trees still be in Joshua Tree National Park in 100 years? Probably not. Some species won't be able to move, and so if we don't do something to protect those species, they'll likely go extinct. Some species will probably be just fine where they currently live. Um, and so one of the active areas of research within the field of conservation biology right now is trying to determine which species are at the greatest risk from climate change. One of the interesting parts of the Earth's history is that over the last couple million years we've had a lot of climate change, warming and cooling, repeatedly in what are called glacial, interglacial cycles. And in parts of the world where species movements were blocked with climate change and they weren't able to shift their geographic distributions, we often saw a lot of species extinction. So Europe, for instance, happens to have a lot of mountain ranges that run east-west, and it has the Mediterranean Sea that runs east-west. And so a species that needed to move north or south in response to rapid warming or rapid cooling often had its ability to move in those ways blocked. In contrast, in North America, land extends all the way down into the tropics. And the mountain ranges that are prominent in North America happen to run north-south. The Rockies, the Sierras, the Appalachians. And so species movements mostly weren't blocked. And so over the last couple million years, with all of this climate change, um, we can see big differences between Europe and North America, for instance. North America lost almost none of its tree species in the last couple million years, whereas Europe lost about half its tree species. And we also know how far these species moved. We know a lot about trees. We know a lot about mammals, too, for instance. Um, and we can look at species maybe that used to live in central Mexico at the, last, at the peak of the last glacial period that now live in the northern US and Canada. So some species will probably shift their distributions by you know, 1,000 miles or more. That's the type of change we're talking about if we don't slow down the rate of CO2 emissions and if we get this sort of runaway climate change.